everybody, welcome back to the DK Natural Bees channel. Um, as you can kind of see, I have to avoid a disaster. The uh, hives are heavy at this time of the year, and I don't know, I just didn't think of it when I was constructing this this spring. All my other ones are constructed in a similar fashion, but the cinder blocks are closer together, and some of them have cinder blocks running in the middle, which is kind of an obvious th way to avoid this problem, but like I said, I didn't think of it, so now I've got to lighten this hive up. Hopefully a uh, good portion of the weight is capped and ready to be pulled, um, but we'll see. So here we go. We've pulled a few frames from this hive already, um, close to a box, maybe, maybe eight medium frames. I wouldn't classify them as the gentlest bees in the world, so you may see me later on with a veil on, depending on how they want to uh, treat me today. top box was one that was extracted a little over a week ago, so I won't be pulling anything from that. I won't even pull a frame out to see how they're doing. I'll be able to gauge that based on how heavy it is. It's not empty, I'll tell you that. of it. That one might be one where I pull the most. Outside frame is starting to get capped. Hopefully, that's a good sign for the rest of them. Pretty good frame. All right, what I'm going to do is shake these off, pop it once on the ground, put it in this box that's on top of a cover, and put a cover on top. I'll have to shake the rest of the bees off before I bring them into the shed or the house, but that does a good job for the for the first batch. 
keeping that cover to keep the bees out of it because they will all flock to it. There's another good one. Try to pick a different spot for your second and succeeding frames when you pop them on the ground. Otherwise, you're just going to crush all the bees that you popped off the prior frame. A lot of people use chemicals. I have used a bee escape before. I've never used chemicals. Um, but I've used a bee escape. And that works all right if you're patient. You put the box that you're going to pull above it and wait a couple days. Nah. This one's got some drone brood right there. It's all right. I, I will just not uncap it. I'll uncap everything around it and then put it through the spinner and that'll remain there. But uh, that's the perils of not running a queen excluder. So yeah, if, you're, if you don't like the idea of shaking frame by frame, you can use a one-way bee escape. They're cheap and you don't need one for each hive. You can do one hive and then do the next one and then do the next one over the course of a week or 10 days or whatever. Or you can just do what I'm doing. It's easier. It's cheaper. That one is freshly capped. It's as white as writing paper. Drone brood. <sighs> I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. Like I said, you just uncap around it. You don't touch it with the knife or the or the scraper. But it is problematic. I mean, I mean, it's not what you want to see when you bust open a honey super. But I, I you know, kind of along the same lines as to why I don't like using chemicals for honey extraction, I don't like using a queen excluder because the name of the game throughout, you know, 80% of the year is find a way to get that queen laying and laying as much as she can, as fast as she can so that your bees can increase in numbers as much as they can, as fast as they can. And... I don't know, you know, I've had queens come up and lay worker brood in the center frames of the honey super. And in that particular case, I mean, big loss, whatever, you leave that frame or you might, you might move it down. Um, but either way, I mean, it's more worker bees. That's what you've been trying to get all year. And so for that reason and the reason that a lot of people have a joking moniker for queen excluders and they call them honey excluders, those two reasons put together are why I don't even bring them out into my yard. I use queen excluders for swarms. I use 
screen excluders for swarms and that's it. All right, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I probably won't pull any more today. Um, I mean, I have some to pull. You got that box is probably full. That one was put on after last week's extraction, so we're just kind of getting started with that. That and that are probably full. Same thing that came from last week's extraction. That deep is more than 60% full, so that's going to be one heck of a heavy box. That is one from last week's extraction. Full last week's extraction. Empty, but I'm, they're so good at drawing comb that I was just seeing if I could get them to draw out a deep for some of my single talls. Um, so yeah, it's uh, August 8th, and... The honey season is obviously slowing down. Um, we've got a lot of honey in a lot of the deep boxes. I'm going to feed thick syrup in September and October to get the weights up. But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get as much honey as I can because I need a lot of equipment for next year. So, um, Hopefully your bees are doing well. I, uh, I don't know. It's been a really good year. I'm excited with the way things have gone. I'm excited for another extraction. We're going to be a part of a farmer's market here in late August, so that should be good. Hopefully that'll put a uh, put a weight on the pocketbook, I hope. I mean, we, we need a lot of equipment, but it's a good problem to have. Too many bees, too few boxes. So if you enjoy this video, you want to see more, click likes, click subscribe. I appreciate it. Otherwise, get out and have fun with your bees.